here we are, dear brothers and sisters, still filled with all the abundant grace that heaven has poured out on us in this succession of solemn feasts that we have lived and that have given us the possibility, the opportunity, above all thanks to the many words of truth of our pontiff Samuel, to detach ourselves from all that is human, in order to project ourselves towards all that is divine, towards the heavenly plan, towards the divine plan. Here is the path that the Father would like for all his children, today more than ever, leave what is human, to go, to tend towards what is divine, to move away from what is world, to take refuge always more in what is heaven. And instead humanity, increasingly dedicated to self-destruction, goes on this path of salvation on the contrary, detaching itself more and more from what is divine, to dive, to throw oneself, to plunge more and more, on the only human level, of all that is human. That's why just in these times, the Father puts into action his divine project of salvation, which comes to the rescue of all men and women of good will, who still aims to heaven and that is fulfilled and materialized, right in these last times, right under our eyes. A project that but, in order to be understood, lived and loved, must be transformed into true worshippers of God, in spirit and in truth. Just as Jesus invites us to do in this one prayer, that he gave us in his first coming, in the long evangelical speech, of the mountain. A prayer that is the subject of today's gospel and that was well explained by our pontiff Samuel, in his act of magisterium of December 25th, our Father, made to give everyone the true and deep understanding of this prayer, so that it was within the reach of all. The Our Father, brothers, is not a prayer. The Our Father, is, the, prayer. The prayer of Christians, to which we must remain anchored, attached, in the essence and in the substance of every single word and its profound meaning that, however, must be increasingly understood. This act of magisterium, that I invite you to read and reread, must become the point of reference for every Christian. The focal point of the life, of all those who believe in the only Father, who manifests himself in the only Master, so that the action of the only begotten Spirit, can manifest Christ the Savior, Christ the way, truth and life. In this act of magisterium, we can find everything, because in it is well explained what is the true will of the Father. What is the authentic teaching of the only Master and what is the continuous action of the only begotten Spirit that advances in history? Only in this way can we understand well the relationship that exists between this Father and this Son. Here is the Son, who invokes the Father, with his faith, with his love, with his total abandonment. A Son who at any cost, wants to do the will of the Father, at any cost wants to obey to his plan, at any cost wants the project, that the Father has on him, is realized. And in doing so, invites all sons on his example and with the help of this prayer, to do the same. Here is our daily effort, to try to become really, so many little Jesus. That effort that leads us to imitate him in everything. Here is the deep meaning of the phrase, may your will be done. So that as Jesus, one does not seek a will that only projected towards oneself, a personal, selfish will. But that one seeks instead, asking the Father to do his will in us, therefore not our will, but that it becomes concrete, as it was for Jesus, the will of God in us and takes consistency and triumph in the heart of everyone. So that the thought of God may win over our limited human reasoning. As our pontiff rightly writes in his act of magisterium, the thought of God must be loved and made one's own, the logic of God is different from human logic, the man who wants to divinize himself, to become as he is, must love and abandon himself to God, to the thought of God, embracing him, even when he is not immediately and totally understandable. Only by abandoning oneself, not out of obligation, but out of love, to God, to his thought and to his teaching, everything can be done and everything will become understandable, in the measure in which each one abandons himself to God, opening one's heart to action of the Holy Spirit. It is really true, only by abandoning ourselves, by opening ourselves to the action of the only begotten divine Spirit in us, that illuminates with his light, that purifies, with his fire of love, the heart the soul and the spirit, will come to the understanding, alive and total, of all that we are living, of all that is happening, before the eyes of all, 
in these last times, of the history of the revelation of God. For millennia, endless generations of men and women of good will, have asked the Father, Thy kingdom come. And after so much waiting, this Holy Father has answered this prayer. Here in this land of love, again descended, the Son of the Highest, to give fulfillment to his kingdom of love and peace on earth. Here in this font of the Holy Spirit, again the Good Shepherd, calls all those children who hear and recognize the true voice of the Good Shepherd and invites them to come and immerse themselves in this font. Here in this white island, the will of the Father has requested the birth of this church to defend the true teachings of Jesus. The true and authentic Christian values that are more and more trampled by many and bartered for a human plate of lentils. And to make return so many souls in Christ, with Christ and for Christ, to the holy path, erected in the right direction, to the conquest of heaven. A church that manifests to the world its dynamism, with its progress. A church well aware of what it is called to do, well aware of the exclusive, total union with the heart of the Father, by virtue of the covenant, that the Father has re-established with this church. A church that, although aware of this, does not boast, does not become pompous, but remains humble, proud and indomitable in its actions. A church that every day advances, tirelessly, to attract to itself as many souls as possible and to bring into the hearts of many, who are still searching for the true God, to give breath and spiritual oxygen, to all those who are in search of the true oxygen. Here you can find it. Here your spirit and your soul and your heart, heart will be nourished by this oxygen. Come to know and live and feed of the true word of God that is completely opposed to the work of the world. Who loves Jesus, entrusts himself totally to the Father, who sees all and knows all, as Jesus teaches us in this passage of the Gospel, even before we ask him, he says, and puts everything at the disposal of his sons, the more they will know how to entrust themselves and abandon themselves to God. Compared to a world that unfortunately no longer trusts in the Lord. A world that only thinks about getting out of the abyss, where it is sinking more and more, not appealing and entrusting itself to the only Savior, who is the only one who could bring to safety. On the contrary, relying on the power of man, who trusts only in himself and abandoning himself, to the man who has discarded the man-god and who does nothing but drive souls further and further from the man-god, praising a new humanism, which then puts man, the environment and many other human problems in the center, but totally deviating from what is divine and that would be the salvation for all. Man has set out towards the abyss of self-destruction, that swallows more and more, as many unfortunately are already experiencing. Here is the decisive and crucial intervention of our pontiff, of the head of this church, that stands with this act of magisterium, at a particular time in the history of God. During which, others have incredibly arrogated to themselves the right, to change a part of this millennial and untouchable prayer. Alluding to non-existent translation errors. Here is that so this church, puts a cornerstone, on what is instead, the true word of Jesus, one cannot replace, do not lead us into temptation, with, do not abandon us to temptation. Because the Father can allow the enemy of God to tempt us. And man, in the freedom received, is free to resist the temptation of the enemy and then do good, or betray God, by embracing the tempter and evil. Who is faithful, does not betray, or at least, strives not to do so. This is the point of the issue. It is not necessary to say to the Father, do not abandon us, because the Father, just because He is Father, in His Son, will never abandon us. The Father immolated His Son for our salvation. How could He abandon us? What must be said strongly, instead to all men who love God is, resist temptation, flee from every temptation, and remain faithful to God. As did, does, and always will, Mary, faithful bride. Invoke Mary, Entrust yourselves and consecrate yourselves to her immaculate heart and overcome temptation, win every evil, as she won, wins, and always will win. That's why brothers, friends, we are called to a true testimony of Christian life, giving an example worthy of the infinite love this Father. 
making his full will converge in us and concretizing it in a holy, righteous daily life, by living totally, the prayer and fraternal union, on the example of she who is our mother and teacher, Maria Giuseppina Norcia, who gave everything for the love of God and who in her prayer, do of me what pleases you, may your will be done, summarized in a few sentences, the true and authentic sense, of being truly, sons of God. Teaching us to entrust ourselves totally to God, loving Him more than ourselves and giving Him a daily, living prayer, but made with the heart, not with many words, said that are of no use, a word lived, alive, concrete, so that by doing so, with our life and with our prayers, we can truly sanctify the name of God, with our existence. Live the true brotherhood, live as true brothers, help each other, support each other, hold each other. As we say, one for all and all for one. And just in that motto, we join the prayer of our Pontiff Samuel. We also say our thanks to the Father, for all that he has given us, gives us, and will always give us. And with one heart and one soul we say, Father may your will be done, Father deliver us from all evil, Father give your mercy to your faithful children and grant your merciful justice to those who betray you, denying your work and blaspheming your Holy Spirit. And so be it.